Hello everybody, my name is Brandon, and in this video I'm going to show you the basics of how to design a stage wash using Vectorworks. Maybe a couple other things. Before planning out our lighting design, we're going to need to know what we're working with. For those who are designing lights that are going to go out on the road or a tour, this is going to be drawing out your stage plot, or at least the stage plot you're hoping to get at every show. For those that work more in-house in, say, a corporate or a theatrical world that have like maybe a black box or ballroom, this is going to be drawing out the venue that you're in. And that's what we're going to go ahead and cover next. There are a couple ways to draw a venue in Vectorworks. Here we're going to look at the two most common though. That's going to be starting with either a DWG or a PDF. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and import a DWG file. So we'll go to File, then we'll go down to Import, and then Import DWG. We'll navigate and grab the file we want. We'll go ahead and open it up. And then from here, we'll go ahead and confirm our settings are correct inside of our dialog. We'll click OK. And then there we have it. There's our venue. The nice thing about the DWG is everything's already scaled, so you know everything's pretty much going to be in the right place. There might be some errors depending on if it was imported or drawn differently, maybe a different scale. So you can go ahead and check that and set it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at importing a PDF. Pretty much the same process. We'll go File, Import, but this time we'll just select Import PDF. We'll find the PDF document and we'll go ahead and open it up. We'll go ahead and import this. We have a couple different pages in this one. Here we've highlighted two rooms that we're going to be working with. And if we take a look on the attached sheet, we can see their height. Now to create a venue from this, the first thing we're going to have to do is scale this PDF right here. So. We'll go to our Scale tool. We'll go ahead and find the current dimension that this has. Once we find that, we'll go ahead in and we'll set its correct size. And there we have our scale PDF drawing ready to go. So now that I've scaled the drawing, the next thing I'm going to want to do is go ahead and draw in the room. So let's go ahead and start with that. So creating this room will be fairly simple. We know the height of the room and we have our basic outline. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a 2D rectangle tool. I'm going to draw out the basic shape of our room. I'll go ahead and over to the object info palette and just adjust it just for a little bit of errors that I had as I was making it. And now that that's complete, I'll go to event design and I'll use the create room command. From here, I'll go ahead and enter in a wall height. I could set up any other information about the room that I needed to. I can also set any rendering options and then just go ahead and click OK. Now I have a complete 3D room with a floor and walls. The next thing I would do from here is, you know, just add in a few doors. Adding doors is pretty easy. I just go ahead and grab the door tool, click to insert, set its size in the object info palette, and then add in any more doors that I need. Now we'll go ahead and add a stage. We'll just go ahead and draw a rectangle like we did last time. Go to our event design tool set and choose create stage. We'll fill in our options and go ahead and click OK. And we'll go ahead and drop a stage down for us. OK, now we've got the main bits done. We've got our stage done. We've got our venue kind of laid out. So now we need to kind of figure out how we're actually going to light this stage. There's a couple different ways to do this. We can use single point front lighting, we could use two point front lighting, or we could even use three point front lighting. Let's go ahead and kind of talk about the differences. One of the easiest and fastest ways to light a stage is just to use one light per zone. In this example, I've set up four zones on our stage, one at the center of each stage deck. So to do a single point per zone, we would just have one light centered on each. Ideally, you would like to have this at a 45 degree down angle to make it more comfortable for anyone on stage. However, the drawback is going to be that it might not look the best on video. 
You might wind up getting a handful of shadows here and there, especially if they walk off left or right, you might see a little bit of a dip. Our next option is to use two lights per zone. This helps remove a lot more of the shadows. Now, ideally, you would love to have these lights at 30 to 45 degrees off axis, as well as keeping that 45 degree down angle that we talked about originally. However, it's not always possible to get this. You can see in this example, we only got 20 degrees off axis. The idea is just to keep it identical, try and keep everybody at about 20 degrees if that's all you could get. And just having it a little bit off left and right is going to help anyone on stage be able to see the audience and be more comfortable. Our last is using three-point front lighting. The nice thing about having a three-point front light is you still get the benefits of having your lights off axis so that people on stage can see a little bit better. And you have a third light that you could even tail down some, getting it a little bit flatter. This way, if you have somebody on stage, you know, maybe doing some makeup, especially with eyes and things like that, that are going to naturally still have shadows, this kind of helps remove that. So having that little bit of extra fill at a nice low angle that you can just bring in a little bit to help out the face and clean up any of those shadows, glasses, uh, people who have maybe some deeper eye sockets, this will help clean all that up. Okay, so we just talked about the difference between single point front lighting, two point front lighting, and three point front lighting. But how do you choose what kind of fixture? Should I use Fresnel, Lico, PAR? Well, that's usually going to depend on what you have and what you're comfortable working with. Now, there's some advantages and disadvantages to each. You know, Lico's are nice because you have the shutter control. Fresnel's are nice because their stage wash is pretty even. Kind of the same thing with PARs. So it's going to be kind of up to you as to which one you're going to choose. The next thing we need to kind of look at is how do you choose the right kind once you figured out the type? Do I use a 19 degree? Do I use a wide flood? Do I need a 2K for now or 1K for now? That's where checking your photometrics is going to come in. So the first formula we have is throw distance over your multiplication factor. This is going to come inside of the specifications for any of the lights that you're looking up. The next thing you want to look at is the peak candela to get enough foot candles on your stage. To do this, you're going to take the peak candela of the fixture and you're going to throw that over the throw distance squared. And this is going to give you how much foot candles you're going to get on stage. Okay, now that we've got our fixtures chosen, let's go ahead and start hanging them. Now, there's two common ways that you're probably going to see with hanging fixtures in this kind of setup. One is going to be having a front of house truss. In this situation, probably not likely. The other one is going to be with truss towers in the back of the room. That's what we'll go ahead and start out with. Let's take a look at how we can draw that out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start here in the back of the room. And I've already got a base plate down, so we'll just go ahead and grab a 10-foot stick of truss. Wet it on top of the base plate. We'll go ahead and grab a 5-foot stick of truss to complete this 15-foot truss tower. There we go. Now we have a 15 foot truss tower. We'll go ahead and add our pipe onto this. Let's go ahead and size this pipe a little bit more appropriate. Go ahead and select it and rotate it towards the stage and get it to fit in here nicely. We'll go ahead and add some fixtures. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and use a 19 degree Lico. We'll go ahead and add one light for each focus position on stage. Go ahead and use spotlight numbering to assign them all to a focus point. Just go ahead and grab every light, get them in the room nicely, and then we'll duplicate them to the other side. And now we've got a nice simple focused front wash. And with the Lico's, I could use some shutters to get this bill off the stage. Let's go ahead and add them to some truss next. Okay, as we can see in this room, I have a much better situation. So in order to plan out my lights here, I'm going to go ahead and start by drawing a line and I'm going to turn it to 45 degrees off axis and then I'm going to go ahead and mirror it to the other side. Now I know exactly where to place my lights to have them at 45 degrees. Next I'll go ahead and select the light I want. For this one I'm going to go ahead and use a 26 degree Lico. Add the first fixture and then add the second. Go ahead and set their focus and turn on my draw beam just to check. Yep, 
Looks like my photometrics are going to work out just fine for this. Now here's a cool trick to go ahead and add three more. What I'm going to go ahead and do is select everything. And I'm going to use Control to click and drag to create a duplicate. And move it to the center of focus point two and then follow it along for three and four as well. Then all I have to do is just change my focus position for the fixtures and it'll be all set to go. And there we go. We have all of our fixtures ready to go. Now let's go ahead and add some backlight to this. Backlight. So what is this all about? Well, backlight adds a little bit of separation in your stage. This is what helps anybody on stage kind of pop away from whatever that background is. Most times you'll have, especially in the corporate world, a black drape in the background, and you can kind of get lost in that a little bit, especially if you're on stage talent has some dark suits on. So by adding a little bit of backlight or hair light, shoulder light, however you want to call it, helps push that away. So that gives you a little bit more depth, really helps punch out on video. So in this example, like it'll probably be in the real world, our upstage has a black drape line. Here we have four pipe and bass to go ahead and add some backlight to our four positions on stage. For this example, I'm going to use pars. I'll go ahead and add the first one. And now to add three more, I'm going to use my move by points tool. There we go. There's all three. Now we just go ahead and set them to the focus points, one, two, three, and four, and we'll be ready to go. Okay. So now we have front light and we have backlight. At this point, we now have a minimum functioning stage wash that has enough separation in it with the backlight that it could stand up to video. However, it's still pretty boring. Let's go ahead and spice it up a little bit and we'll add some up lights and maybe a few little LEDs around. Okay, for this example, we'll go ahead and start with adding eight up lights behind the stage. I'm going to go ahead and add a color force and I'm going to go ahead and change its rotation so that way it's pointing straight up. I'm going to go ahead and add another one to the other side. I'll go ahead and use my move by points tool to add three more groups. All right, now we've got some behind the stage. Let's go ahead and add some on the drape line. And there we go. But I think there's a little more we can do here. Let's go ahead and add a couple more LED tubes. This way, it'll have a nice effect in the backdrop. Go ahead and add my tube. We'll rotate it so it's at a vertical. Go ahead and give it a height. And now let's add a couple more. Well, we'll make a total of six. Now let's go ahead and see how this looks. There we go. We got some LED tubes behind our stage. We got some up lights. Let's go ahead and give these a kind of a funky pattern. Okay, let's go ahead and get set up so we can go ahead and make a plot of this. The first thing we're gonna do is draw a rectangle around our area that we want to have. And then we go to view and we're gonna go ahead and create a viewport of this. We're going to go ahead and put this on our first sheet layer, set it up as we want, go ahead and give it a drawing title, and then click OK. All right, let's go ahead and set a new scale so we can fit this on the page. We'll go ahead and make a copy of it, and then we'll go ahead and edit this down so that we, we can get a better view of our stage. Give this a new name. and add some dimensions. Okay, now that we've gotten that done, let's go ahead and make this a little bit nicer and we'll create a rendering. First, we'll change the uplight colors to blue. Yeah, there we go. Looks a lot better on that drape line. Uh, let's go ahead and turn the lit fog off for our front of house fixtures. It's not gonna look as nice. There we go, that looks nicer. Now I'll go ahead and turn our ambient light off, that way we have a nice room look. All right, now we'll go ahead and add in a RenderWorks camera. This way we can get a nice rendering. We'll activate our camera and go ahead and set up our rendering options. And then we'll just make a viewport from this. Now that we have everything ready to go, we'll go to File, Publish, and we'll go ahead and publish this. So there you have it, front wash, backlight, 
some LED up lights as well as some LED tubes to give it a little bit of eye candy. I hope you have enjoyed this basic introduction to lighting design concepts. Down below in the description, you'll find some more resources to help you along your journey. And go ahead and leave a comment. Let us know how we did or anything else you'd like us to cover. Thanks a lot and have a great day.